Welcome to the Architect of Resilience podcast, where we explore the secrets of overcoming life's challenges and unlocking unstoppable strength through deep personal conversations and expert insights. What's going on with Kabuki strength, Kabuki power? Why the silence? Well, this series is going to dive into that. It's going to take several videos to go over it, but that's really just a minor subset of what this series on the Architect of Resilience podcast is about. This is stories about my life and how I use that as a framework. And it's a framework, I call it the endless evolution, and we're really going to be diving into what I call the six P's of personal development. And it is how I use growth and challenge to do just that. How do I grow from challenge? But I want to give a brief intro of who I am. Like, why should you listen? I imagine there's going to be other people that get onto this. So, Chris Duffin, I'm a leading engineer and author in regards to human resilience. I've got inventions that are used in nearly every professional sports team in North America. <laughs> close to a thousand colleges, every branch of the military, even in the White House. But it's my passion and where that success has come from is the mental models that I developed when I was young, while I was overcoming, in, I would say insurmountable, but incredibly challenging obstacles that I had to overcome and trauma from a very unique life. And that is what allowed me to come from literally the sticks in the mountains to what I've accomplished. So this, again, this series is going to be about me telling stories from my life and how I use that as a framework and approach to grow. So we're going to roll back this Kabuki story. Going to roll it back because we're going to start with one of the six P's called the plunge. And so this starts in October. I was on a high in October. Kabuki Strength had been dealing with lead time issues for years and was finally getting that in control. I had several different patents I was working on at the time, and I was out on a speaking tour. I was... <laughs> Uh, one week I was in Washington, D.C. I actually had my whole family there, private tours of the Capitol, uh, the White House. And I was sitting there on the kind of the main street in a giant museum uh, of naval history in the big auditorium doing a presentation, a keynote to the Washington, D.C. Uh, fire departments and the Capitol Police around specifically overcoming trauma, how to propel your life forward. And then the next week, I was doing a speech at uh, Society for Weightlifting Injury Prevention and Sports. Uh, I actually achieved a Lifetime Achievement Award at the event. Uh, it was really tremendous. And then the week after that, I was in Boston. And I was doing a keynote at a, uh, an annual summit there as it relates to strength training and, and human development. So I fly home from that weekend. I don't remember if it's Monday or Tuesday. We'd look whenever Halloween was, right? And so I'm on, I'm on this high. And I get back. And the next day, Halloween day, I get issued an email saying that I was going into default on several million dollars in debt. And this is when that whirlwind of uncertainty, what I call the plunge, when you're you don't know where to turn and what's going on. And this is, we all get these moments in life. There's nothing special about my life or my circumstance, but it's my story to talk about how we deal with those experiences and how we can leverage them for the best if we understand what that moment is and how to respond within that moment. So it's deeper than that. So the situation, what had happened is, like I said, Kabuki had been dealing with lead time issues for a long time. There was a lot of cash flow issues with the business because the market was really high. We developed a lot of uh, burden and, be, and behind with the, the vendor base uh, because we had to, at one point, we were sending product all over the Northwest, four different states, 
to try to meet customer demand and had gotten behind you know, financially during that time because of the cost of that and trying to get current. And so I'd gone out and I'd gotten a loan for a few million dollars to allow us to bring our lead time down, to build the inventory necessary to get out of this situation. And at the same time, put some money into product development and innovation that Kabuki was known for. And so I was doing that, but the economy started on a tailspin even further at that time. Buying started slowing down. And so we didn't see an uptick in sales. In fact, started seeing a further descent in some sales while we were building, building inventory and consuming cash. And so we got to a point where we fell into to default on that. And during the course of this, I wasn't paying myself. I'd been paying myself for like a year. So I was actually going into foreclosure on my home. I was going to go into foreclosure in December. And my plan was to get through Black Friday, be able to pay myself and get out of that situation. Then all of a sudden, we're in this and I'm literally going to lose Kabuki strength. I'm going to lose the business. Everything that I've worked for, for all these years, it's going to be gone. I'm going to have to let go my friends, employees, <laughs> like I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to be on the street. That was a tailspin and it was coming down fast. Now, a lot of how we're taught to deal with things like that is to try to blunt it, to try to ignore it, to overcome it. But the plunge is different than some of these other. And this is why it's important to understand these particular moments and how you respond to them. Because when you're in those moments and fear is overpowering you, it closes your windows. These blinders come on and you get this tunnel vision and all you can see is one thing and you can't see the opportunities that are truly out there. And that's what I've really learned is how to manage fear in life from it being that earliest story in my, uh, in my autobiography where I'm talking about when I was living homeless in the mountains at six years old and we're, you know, living up with this little stream running through a meadow. I've got uh, one younger sister, a younger brother, and a second younger sister uh, on the way, and we're living in these tree forts, right? We've got beams lashed to the trees. Sorry for my existing audience that may have heard this story a million times or read my book. And there's rattlesnakes all over. There was actually a rattlesnake. And that's a, one of the ways that we, we ate was eating rattlesnakes. And, but there was the danger of them. And I was literally at that age taught how to capture, handle, and kill live rattlesnakes. And so I opened my book, this story of six years old with this rattlesnake wrapping around my hand and looking into the mouth of that rattlesnake and realizing like, if I let fear overcome me right now and I freeze and lock down, I'm dead. But if I don't, if I, no fear, <laughs> Like we love that, uh, that brand of shirts and clothing that was around for a while. Maybe it still is. That mentality still is around. No fear. Fuck no fear. You're, you're dead. Uh, if you don't respect it, right, you're also dead. And, and these, these lessons have gone through life, but they're much bigger than that. And so the important thing about being in the plunge is not trying to work through it. It's understanding that this event that is coming next is literally the pit, what I call the pit. And the strategies to work through that are very different, but we're talking about this experience and we have to take the unique opportunity of what's available at that moment. And to do so, you need to face into, look into that fear, look into those highs and understand about myself. It is an opportunity to learn about yourself. And as you do so, as you face those, those things, those demons will say in this moment, maybe I'm overstating, but we've all been there in life and you know what I'm talking about, right? It allows you to see unhindered, to take those blinders off and see the things around you that you can't see. So 
It sounds very, you know, ethereal, but it is literally peeling back the layers of why am I scared? Because the biggest opportunity you have at this moment in time, it's not getting through this moment. It is a massive opportunity to learn more about yourself because those emotions are coming at you and it is your time to actually go into them, to meditate into those feelings and understand. And as you're peeling back those layers, it's not about the external things that you fear. It is, it's internal. It is your insecurities. And don't tell me you don't have insecurities. I'll tell you, I have them. In this moment, these were some of my biggest insecurities that I have coming to me. The fear of failure. The fear of losing my family. To being a lesser human being. Because in my life, the only time I felt worthy was through my accomplishments. You're talking to someone that was bought and sold as a child, like looked at than less than a human being. And through my whole life, the only thing, the only time I ever got rewarded or seen was by excelling. So no fucking shit. I lifted massive weights and tried to do more. No shit, I excelled in the business world. And that's before Kabuki strength. No shit, I wanted to beat everybody in the classroom. I, wanted, I had to be the best of the best of the best at every fucking thing I did in my life. Because it was the only way that brought me self-worth. And so facing that and facing and understanding, like, I am wor worth more. I'm worth more just on my own than those things. I don't need to earn that. And that's, that's hard to do. And so those moments in the plunge allow you to look inward to yourself and discover these things. Because what you, the other piece that you're trying to discover is here during this is really truly understand and refine your personal, your values as a human being. Because this is your opportunity. Your values are your lens for how you walk in this world, what you do. And that word gets tossed around and everybody's got their mission and values and you walk into organizations that got it printed on their walls and you ask somebody and they don't even know what it is. You ask them what it means, if you point to it, they can't they fumble around. But we're talking about you. Okay? And if you're wondering what it is, there's a couple different ways to look at this. It's your intentions. Your intentions, is another word, is your values. The things that give you passion and purpose are your values. And we're going to dive into other pieces. Like I said, this is a big series. So we're going to talk about those ways of finding those values and using that for goal setting and all sorts of methodology for around that. But that's, that's a primer. And usually if you dig down there, you'll find like six or seven, like core root values. But a lot of people more lately have been walking down to a, a triangle, a trifecta of a couple words that can really define who you are. So for me, I'll go ahead and go through it. You know, walking and through this and thinking about it at that time, what am I? I'm a guide. You use a lot of words for that. A mentor, a leader, a whatever you call it, an educator, uh, what we're doing here, passing along knowledge, inspiring people, the grand goals, peace that I worked on, like all these things, every aspect of that in the way I try to impact people in this world is as a guide. It's exactly what we're doing here, right? The other is I'm a creator. Love to be able to create something from nothing, to create things that people don't see. The magic and the things around us 
that we don't realize and bring that into existence via, you know, a mental model to a physical thing with the inventions and things that I have, right? And passion. I want to live with passion in all things. And that was, that was certainly, you know, it was great being on the road and having my family, my kids sit there as I'm giving this uh, speech to the, the, you know, the Capitol Police and fire and get, get to see their dad do that. And uh, man, that just brings, I just, I love what I do, I'm passionate about. But when I get stuck in the grind and the stress and the fear, I lose that. I lose a connection to, that's, I want to have passion with my, with my, with my wife with my family, with what I create and everything that I do in life. It's why I chose to walk away from the corporate world. I loved what I did there as far as the mentoring and growing people in those organizations because that's how I achieved world-class success in that realm, by the way. Um, there he is, go trying to stroke that eagle, show, show, my, show my worth in the world, right? Uh, you, you can see that even in my intro, right? I, I dive back to these things, but I think it's important to articulate because it, it's helping frame the story. And, but doing that wasn't giving me passion beyond that. And that's why I chose to walk away from that career, to be able to have the time and space to be more connected and passionate with my family, with my work and being able to create more that trifecta, right? And so within this moment, going somewhere with this story, right? I'm sitting there, I'm going to lose my home, which tells me I'm just freaking out. I'm going to lose my my family, I'm not going to have a place for them to stay. My, my wife's going to leave me and take off with our daughter. My other two kids are going to bend up with their, their ex. Like I'm just, I just the whirlwind of like those moments that whirling around you. Right. And you, that just makes you lock up. You ain't going anywhere. And, and the pit's still coming like the working through this. So these plunge moments, and it's important to understand, they could be momentary. They could be hours. They could be days, or they could be longer periods of time. And there's both if we're talking from a training perspective, there's entire micro and macro cycles of the six P's framework. The precipice, the plunge, the plateau, the pull. Um, there is micro and meso, micro, micro and macro cycles of that. And each one is an opportunity to get a little bit stronger, maybe prepare for the bigger ones that are coming. And so this was, this was a bigger one. I had time to really process this and think into it. What am I going to do? How am I going to tackle this as I move into that next phase of like, how do I work through this? And so that gave me a lot of peace and an opportunity to sit back and go, what am I going to do? And so you're seeing some of the outputs of that right now. I wanted to start my podcast again, and I wanted to focus the Architect of Resilience podcast, to bring on leaders in different realms and to talk and tell my personal stories. And this part was my plan uh, to get to this, but there's been a lot that's kept me away from the course of that as I've worked through the pit portion of it, which got worse as I encountered other things like dealing with the death of my mother. And uh, there's a lot of, yeah, it's been a, it's been a packed punch of a, a, of a pit in this period. But... <clears throat> The podcast was one to be able to sit down and share stories like this, to bring on people and have them share stories. And also, what did I do? I went, well, I don't need to show my, I don't need to be a business leader. I don't need to make tons of money, which <laughs> I never, I wasn't making any much money ever since I left my prior career. Um, it's uh, <laughs> always the vision, right? But <clears throat> I didn't need, I've done enough. I'm good enough as it is. So what do I really need? I, listen again. I'm good enough as it is. I don't need to rely on being and accomplishing more and proving more. The person that asked me, what's my next grand goal? What's the next big thing I have to do to demonstrate to the world? I don't have, like, I don't have to do anything, okay? except for things that feed me, that feed my soul, that fit. When I use my values as a lens for the world, does it fit within that? And so, yes, 
mentoring, passing along knowledge, sharing. That's why I wrote my book, which was hard to write. If you haven't read it, please go take a look at it. it uh, it's got incredible reviews, goes into depth on a lot of stuff, but we're diving further. This is what should be my next book, right? This is 25 years of work in like the leadership realm I've been pulling together. And I validated this model against a lot of different people. I want to like, I want to get this out there for free and pieces of this. It's, it's disjointed in ways and that's fine. We're not going to go through this in a, in a passion, but the other is I'm a creator and passion. How do I take that? Well, you're sitting in front of some of those things right now. I got back to working on things that bring me that, that space, that peace and making sure I've got time in my life. And oh my God, my performance, even though I take time for those things across all realms, my creativity, my resilience, all these things are boosted. All right, guys, we talk a lot about mental resilience on this podcast, but let's talk about another type of resilience. That's movement resilience. We want to move well, recover better, and do it for life. And it starts with your feet. And you can start today with Naboso. Naboso is a sensory technology company founded by a functional podiatrist. And all their products feature a texture to stimulate, strengthen, and awaken your feet. I use their splay toe spacers and Neuroball to release my feet at the end of every day. They also have these textured recovery socks that feel like a mini massage when you walk around. If you're looking for an effective way to bulletproof your feet, head to Naboso. Dot com, that's N-A-B-O-S-O dot com and use code RESILIENCE for 20% off. I am performing at an incredible level and I'm so proud of what I've accomplished over the last six months working through this. Like, I am proud to myself, not to like, of just personally, the things that I don't get to, to, to rest the laurel on to get, say, look, I did this because I'm proud of like how I handled so many situations and how I walked through that space. And nobody knows what that is, be it a conversation, strategy, struggle. I did that and I'm proud of how I did that. And I was able to do that by living the way I truly am. But I also took my other ideas like, all right, Kabuki fails. I'm okay with that. I don't need that, but I still want to create. I still want to bring my ideas, the things that I've been working on for decades in my mind that are to pull a lot of these ideas together. And so I did that. I took this larger scope idea and I went out, created a, a, a pitch for what it is. I have nothing. I've got a company that's going to, that's going to close. I've got, I've got no money to my name. I don't have any assets. Literally I have nothing but I have this, I have my passion, I have my mind. And I took that idea and I went out to some large investors, several different billionaires, venture capital, and I pitched this idea. And it was really just pulling together like my concepts on training methodology for the last 500 years to now and where that evolution is going. And everyone I talked to was like, that is incredible. I want to be part of that. And so I started navigating a bunch of different avenues to bring those things to life. And at the end of the day, one of those leading candidates was the person that I was going into default with for the millions of dollars. And we'll get more to that story, but I didn't need to save it. And that wasn't the goal goal is to bring these ideas to life. And that's all I cared about. And I felt comfortable with walking away from everything and doing nothing more than designing and creating and bring those to life through other companies, licensing, whatever have you, spending the time working on the things, being with my family, having passion in my life and developing a strategy to share the things that I want to empower other people to find themselves. And this put me in the position now to navigate the pit. I'm not going to dive into that today. I think this is a good time to, to wrap up uh, this conversation. But in the course of 30 days, so from November, actually 60 days, mid-December, I was pitching this idea. And then by the end of December, 
I was working deals with venture capital. This stuff sometimes takes years, years to do. Move that in the scope of the course of days, 30, 60, 90 days. I completely had an entire strategy built out and people working with teams all over the US around different approaches to bring this to life. You will not get there if you can't see the opportunity in front of you, if you're locked down with fear, if you're locked up and frozen with that rattlesnake in your hand, you're gonna end up losing everything because you can't move, you can't see. All I can see is this. And that is the thing. You need to use these moments to learn, lean in, meditate into it, learn about yourself and be willing to accept what it tells you and the uncomfortable things you may learn because it's not the external world. It is you. And you need to learn what those things, those insecurities are and be able to un better understand yourself, understand and develop further your values because they're constantly evolving over the course of time with where you're at in life and understand what those values are and your lens with which you attack the world. This is the moment and the value of that whirlwind of the scare of like, oh my God, I just stepped off a cliff and I'm in a free fall. And that is how you can move that scary, I'm in a free fall, I'm losing, like to a moment of propelling your life to the next fucking level, to a level you never thought possible if you do these things. Be creating a free group, check out the website, uh, my website, chrisduffin.com. Uh, so you can find out more about where to, uh, to find that group and discuss and learn more uh, about what we're doing here with this methodology and the framework with it. But please continue to subscribe to the podcast, the channel, and share it with anyone that you think is necessary. Check out my audible, my audio book, The Eagle and the Dragon by Chris Duffin. Um, thank you.